car I'm driving, this is a mid-60s Plymouth Belvedere station wagon, 66 to be exact. These cars were sort of the workhorse of the American middle class. When I was a kid, this was good, solid transportation. Had a 361 V8, a lot of torque, had the rear seats that face out the back. It's loud, it's not fuel efficient. This one has, must have about half a million miles on it. It's just beat to death. This thing led a hard life, but it gets you where you want to go. Get a heavy amount of smoke starting to come out of the back, it looks like. This thing is getting dicey. Do you have a fire extinguisher on board there? Yes, several. OK. It's overheating. I told you this thing was pretty much beat to death. We just got more fluids in it, so we should be good to go for at least another 20 minutes. I have a certain affinity for these because they remind me of my youth and all the stupid things we used to do in them. In fact, the man we're going to meet in just a few minutes also did a lot of stupid things in a car like this. In fact, we're going to pick him up at the house that he grew up in. This is amazing. Look at this. It's your dream car. <laughs> it's a Belvedere. It is a Belvedere. <laughs> Have you been, my friend? Good to oh, see you. Man. Good, good to see you. Good to see you. That's right. It's Weird Al Yankovic, the man behind some of the greatest musical parodies of all time, like Eat It, which is a parody of the Michael Jackson song, Beat It. Other hits include Amish Paradise and Al's biggest billboard success to date, White and Nerdy. <laughs> Now, this is your childhood home you grew this up here? This is where I grew up. My folks lived here since 1959. Wow. Yeah, they lived here till 77. So I, I spent the first 16 years of my life in this house. OK. And then you went to school right there. That was your high school yeah, right th there? This is now the middle school, but it used to be Linwood High School. So I didn't have to drive very far <laughs> to go to high school. It's you know, right fact, there. you drove to school at all. It's yeah. pretty amazing. <laughs> it's, it's right there. <laughs> now, this is 66 Belvedere. Right. Yours was what year? Ours was a 64. It was a black with a red upholstery. And we had the push button transmission. Oh, yeah, cool yeah. If time. you can type, you can drive. Exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, the, the very first song that I ever wrote that got played on the radio was about my car, the Belvedere. It was a love song, basically, right. about the family about car. About the car. Well, yeah. come on, let's go for a ride. Oh, yeah. Awesome. There are few people can say the family car was the origin of their career, but hey, they don't call them Weird Al for nothing. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. This is, look, the original AM radio. This should bring back all kinds of memories. Yeah, we had the same red upholstery. Same red That's, upholstery. I remember. Oh, yeah. I remember the, the little holes in the roof. Yeah. I remember the crack in the windshield. This is so authentic. Let's, so, let's do it. OK, here we go. Woo! Gearing. <laughs> so this is the auditorium where I performed uh, Rebel Without a Cause. They're still talking about it. I played the band, the gang leader, Crunch. Oh, really? <laughs> now, was that I, a play? Or yeah, was that it, was a, it was a high school oh, play. Oh, oh. I think I had two lines, so that was my oh, big oh. untrained to show business there. So that was based on the movie Rebel Without a Cause. There was a movie? Sal, Sal Mineo and well, James <laughs> Dean, of course. Oh, that one, yes, yeah. yes. So you were always a performer, even as a kid, right? I mean, I played the accordion since I was, you know, seven, eight years old. Now, who gave you, was that your parents' idea to play the yeah. accordion? Was it your idea? I, I can't imagine I was begging my parents for accordion no, lessons. No, because that was not, to be fair, the hippest instrument. At the time, you know. When we were growing up. But my know? grandmother loved the Lawrence Welk show. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. my parents decided, you know, if you play the accordion, you're never lonely. You're always the life of any party. Right, yeah. <laughs> You're a one-man band. You're a one-man band. You can do yeah. everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was fortuitous that they gave me accordion lessons because when I first started sending in tapes to the Dr. Demento show, right. uh, it stood out from the pack. This kid's got an accordion. What's he thinking? Dr. Demento had kind of a hip radio show. He was a big blues aficionado. Right. And he had like a quarter of a million records in his house. He was a huge collector. Right. Uh, but he found that when he played like the weird, wacky stuff on the radio, people responded to That's that. So like. the yeah, whole yeah. show became that kind of music. Woo! 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 
So you were a fan and then just started calling in the show? Yeah, I was like 12, 13 years old and I would yeah. listen every Sunday night. I mean, some of the songs were a little risque, so I had to like, like have the AM, FM clock radio oh, next yeah. to my head under the sheets, you know, listening that's surreptitiously funny. at night. Well, that's very funny. And yeah, I, I would send him stuff in the mail and I was uh, one of the first, uh, you know, uh, listeners whose music he played on the show. Keep in mind, this is me recording in my bedroom in that house in Linwood onto a 39 cent cassette. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know. So you were sort of on the radio before you even on stage, right? Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, before you played in front of people, you would... <laughs> It didn't give me a lot of credit in high school. It wasn't like, oh, you're the guy on the Dr. Demetta show. But how cool was it to be 12 or 13 and hear your stuff on the radio? It, for me, it was amazing. Yeah. Like, you see those scenes in those rock and roll movies where you hear your song on the radio for the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go crazy, and it was exactly that. Now, were girls impressed by... <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> no. Even when I was, even when I was a top forty artist, uh, girls were not impressed. <laughs> wow! But now, something people might not know, you were also the valedictorian of your class. Right? That's true. Yeah. Um, so you were a smart kid. You know, when I when I write a song like "White and Nerdy," that comes from a lot of personal experience. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I graduated. I actually skipped a grade. I started kindergarten early, so I started high school when I was twelve. Wow. And graduated when I was sixteen, and somehow still wound up the valedictorian. Wow, okay, and then you went to college for what? It was uh, for architecture. Oh, well, that really paid off. Yes, wow. yes, you know, I, you know, I think uh, a, a degree in architecture is the best training for a career in music. Now, let me ask you now, when you wanted, when you wanted to go into music, were your parents, <laughs> did well, they get it? Well, not so much. I mean, you know, my, my parents knew that I was always pretty grounded, and I wasn't like, you know, I'm going to go out to LA and be rich and famous. I, right, never, right. I never was that guy. To me, it was like, just finish college, so you have something right. to fall, fall back, back on. on. Yes. Have something to. That was my parents' thing. Yeah. You want to do the comedy thing, because you know people would say, "Oh, Kathy's boy wants to be a comedian." Oh, oh I'm it so was, sorry. Oh, it was, I'm very sorry. <laughs> you know, it's such a stupid pipe dream. Yeah, yeah. But it, if you have a degree, you can always fall exactly. back. Exactly. Yeah, so. And I still have to fall back on it. If this music thing doesn't pan out for right, me, right, right. I can design houses. You can build a weird house. That's right. <laughs> Chico's Pizza, that's still there. Wow. Now, where did the name Weird Al come from? Did you give it to yourself? Did someone go, hey, that guy's weird? Hey, that's a good name. I mean, where did it, it come kind of, from? It was yeah. kind of like that. I mean, I, t I decided to take it on professionally, but I, I was given that nickname. I think my freshman year in college in the dorms, uh, I, I don't think it was an affectionate nickname. People, you know, people would see me in the halls and go, oh, yeah, there goes Weird Al. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, I thought, yeah. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to use that as an empowered name. I'm going to take it on, and I'm going to be Weird Al. And, I'm, and, and, and I've heard from people over the years that actually uh, it's meant a lot to them because when people would make fun of them for being, like, weird or unusual or freakish, right. they go, oh, well, here's a guy that, like, is, sure. is owning that name. Was there a car that you bought when you first got that first breath for success? Once the 64 Belvedere had sort of run its course, did you um, get something fancy or just get a regular well, car? Well, you know, I, I drove the parents, my parents' Belvedere into the ground. I took it to, to college with me. Right. Uh, and then, you know, the, the engine block froze up. Yeah. I was like, what, you have to put oil in this thing? I had no idea how to oh, take really? care of a car. Okay, yeah, so I just really completely a, killed yeah. it. We, yeah. we literally sold it for, uh, for scrap metal. I think I got 200 bucks for it. All I saved was this. Oh, the bell! Oh, this, look at that! This is from the original car. I, wow. I I sold it, but I ripped this off. This is all that's left of my Plymouth Belvedere. So you are not a mechanical not guy. Not so much. Not so much. Not so see, much. See, see, now I've got a Tesla, so I don't need to put oil in. So oh, that's like, right. Yeah, that's, that's where that works. Good. That's very good. But you have to plug it in. So yes. don't, don't yeah. lose that. I, I know how to do that, though. Okay. Now, obviously, the reason I brought this car is that your first song was written about the Belvedere. Yes. So tell me how that came about. Why? What was the thinking? <sighs> I probably just got my driver's permit, I don't know, but it was always like, you know, the family car, and I th thought, you know, not many people write love songs about their car, right. so I, I thought it would be cool to just write a song about the Belvedere. Right. So uh, I just whipped out the accordion, and I did a jaunty little ditty. Oh, you right. want me to play it for you? Uh, I can play it for you. It'd be nice to hear it maybe another time. It'd be like carpool polka. You don't have anything to play it on. I've got my accordion right in the back. No, no that's okay. What? what? Jay, it's right in the back. It's so convenient. <laughs> Look, here, wait. See, look. Ah, ah. Who put the accordion in the back seat? Oh, oh my goodness, I gotta tune this thing up. Ah, 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 ah. I'm a little rusty, I haven't done this in like yeah, yeah. four decades, so. Now you won't find me bragging about my big green station wagon. We're talking about the traffic laws I'm breaking. 
Everybody knows that I wouldn't dare to match my wits with a red Corvair. And just the thought of a Pinto leaves me shaking. Now I don't think that I could hack driving a big white Cadillac with ripped up upholstery and unnecessary frills. Beautiful song. So I don't think that I could bear driving something other than a Belvedere. And a Belvedere, I could really get my thrills. You know, it's such a subtle instrument. That's what I like. <laughs> Hey CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you'll find videos from all your favorite CNBC shows. Be sure to subscribe by clicking right here. Click on the videos around me and watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.